and the desert shall rejoice and blossom like a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice. Even with joy and singing, the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellence of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellency of him. Strengthen the weakened hands and make firm the feeble feet. Say to those who are fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, and he will come and save you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be stopped. Um, I was just hearing the Lord saying, like, even it, as we're in our homes, even as we um, <laughs> maybe have nothing to do or maybe we have everything to do, um, that we can still come to the Lord with joy and singing and that we can really still seek him in our time of need and that he will heal the blind and that he will make the lame walk, even in our own homes, even when um, fear may be um, a lot right now. But I just really pray peace over your homes right now. And I just, yeah, um, ask that the Lord would really just bless each and every one of our homes as we sing to our Savior. <laughs>
Good morning, morning, church family. I'm Pastor Bud, and this is my lovely wife, Anna. And wow, we miss seeing each and every one of you. It's amazing how life can just flip upside down everything so quickly, and it just looks so differently in such a short period of time. Gathering as believers in Christ takes on a whole new meaning, and we look forward and long for the day 
when we can come together and hug and enjoy potlucks and just rejoice in all that God is doing and has done. So please know that we are praying for each of you to experience God's faithfulness in a new way during this season. Would you join us in prayer? Lord, I just thank you for this day and for all that you're going to do in it. I pray that we just lift your name high through this message. I pray that you use these words to go to the ears that hear them, that they would be received and edify them and encourage them, Lord. So I thank you for all that you're going to do, and I pray that you would restore the lives that Satan is so trying to hurt through the epidemic of this COVID-19, Lord. I pray for your protection, for your healing, and for your miraculous restoration in this time, I pray. In your name, and all God's children said, Amen. 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 All right, well, I hope you guys all had a really great Easter. Um, it was definitely a different way of celebrating this year than I've ever done in the past. Um, but the resurrection is still the same. He is risen. Amen. So my thoughts could not stop turning this past week to Peter and Judas. So today, we just want to bring you a message about redefining failure, being fully known and truly loved. Peter failed, and Judas failed. One was redeemed, and one was not. And as we read the scripture today, and the redemption that comes from Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we want you to know that God has always fully known and truly loved you, regardless of your failure. God's love isn't about who we are, but about who he is. Let me repeat that again for you. God's love isn't about who we are, but about who he is. Our world today seems to be redefining a lot of things. We are redefining what we can do, where we can go, who we can hug, whether we can shake a hand or give a fist bump. So today, let's dig in and see how Jesus redefines failure. So what is failure anyways? Well, let's talk about that. Failure is not failing to reach your goal. Failure is not even having a goal. Failure is not failing to hit your target. Failure is not even having a target to hit. Failure isn't even falling down. It's failing to get back up once you've fallen down. So if you're attempting something for the glory of God, that's a good thing. You have not failed. Failure is not trying and not accomplishing anything. Failure is failing to try. Fear of failure keeps so many of us trapped, frozen, not moving forward. One way to start to break that in our lives is to never compare ourselves to anybody else. You're always going to find somebody who's doing a better job than you are, and you're probably going to get discouraged. And then you might even find some people who aren't doing as good a job as you are, and you might become prideful. Both of those will mess you up. Discouragement and pride will keep you from serving God's purpose for your life. Hmm. So I'd like to share with you, church family, and those watching today, a time in my life where I believe I failed. Um, when I went back to old behaviors and, and just really had a rough time just in life. You see, since an early age, since five years old, I felt the call of Christ in my life to share his message and to share the love that he has for all of us, for me and for you, with, with everybody. Um, and I, I really rejected that. I really turned a different direction even though I was hearing and I received the good news and I accepted Christ from an early age. I really denied Christ and did my own thing. I, I, I didn't know it at the time, but as a, a Christ follower, I was betraying him as a Christian, as a follower of Christ. I chose other things of the world, like alcohol and addiction to that. I chose to hurt my family by working too much. 
I just really was doing the wrong things. And it came to a point in my life where I didn't think there was going to be a tomorrow for me. I was so depressed that I just wanted to give in and to end my life. And that failure is exactly where Satan wanted me to be. Wow. I remember all of those things so clearly. Betraying and denying, one is just as bad as the other. But Judas and Peter had entirely different fates because one repented. Peter wept bitterly. Judas hung himself. Repent, repentance and regret. Most of us would define Peter's denials of the Lord as failure. In Jesus' worst moments, Peter denied he had any connection with the Lord, even though a short time before his denials, he was adamant that he would never turn away from the Lord. We must learn two very important lessons in this. First, our failures don't have to be the defining characteristic of our walk with Jesus. Peter was weak and stumbled, but because of his deep repentance, the Lord's forgiveness, and the power of the Holy Spirit, he was used mightily by the Lord. We must never dismiss anyone, not even ourselves, to think that we have failed for letting the Lord down at one time or another. God is gracious and compassionate and will forgive our sins if we genuinely repent. Second, the Lord can use our failures to make us equipped to better serve others in his family. So if you would at home, please turn on your Bibles or turn on your Bible and open your Bible apps to, chap to John chapter 21. And we're going to begin in verse 15 in the NIV version this morning. It's chapter 21, verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Let's talk about three denials from Peter along with three questions from Jesus. Jesus led Peter through an experience that would remove the shame of his denial. When Peter answered yes, Jesus told him to feed his sheep. It is one thing to say you love Jesus, but the real test is the willingness to serve him. Peter had repented, and here Jesus was asking him to commit his life. Peter's life changed when he finally realized who Jesus was. His occupation changed from fisherman to evangelist. His identity changed from a driving force to the rock. And his relationship to Jesus changed. He was forgiven. And he finally understood the significance of Jesus' work about his death and resurrection. When we choose Jesus, and decide to follow him, he already expected our future failures just as he expected Peter's. We may not want to believe that we could deny Jesus, but Jesus knows what is in us. There's this fun little saying I've seen going around the internet. When God put a calling on your life, he already factored in your stupidity. Whoa, that's the most comforting thing I've ever the key is to not let our failure define us. And don't internalize a failure to the point that it starts to ferment and turn to regret. Own it. Learn from it. Unfortunately, pain can probably be our best teacher. Just because you're down doesn't mean you're out. Not by a long shot. Even in our failures, 
God can still accomplish his purpose. It's through our weakness that he shows himself strong. Peter's failure did not define him, and ours will not define us. There are humbling stumbles along the path of following Jesus, who paid the price for our sins on the cross. Jesus specializes in transforming failures into rocks of strength for his church. So back to my story about what Satan was trying to use to destroy me. It actually turns that as I found a special touch of Christ in my life, later in, I don't know, I think I was, yeah, I was just into my 30s, the Lord spoke to me in a new and fresh way. And at that point in time, I was ready to say, yes, I'm in, Lord. I repented and turned. The betrayal and all of the denial, all of those feelings left me, and I was made clean and white as snow, and he was able to use me and bring me back and put my feet back on the rock in his salvation. It gave me a new purpose in my life, just as it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for he knows, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. That was probably one of the most amazing times in our life when God restored and redeemed so much. So in close today, facing failure full on can be the greatest gift we'll ever experience. Let me repeat that again for you because this one's a mouthful. Facing failure full on can be the greatest gift we'll ever experience. Acceptance based on our ability to hold it in, cover up, and stress out about all the ugly stuff isn't really acceptance at all. Once you take that vulnerable step of allowing someone to see the fullness of your failures you embrace the freedom of being fully known and truly loved. Failure doesn't seem so fearsome, and the gospel message resonates more deeply. Mm, that's good. And the good news is that Jesus has already seen our failures, already seen my failures, the past, the present, and the future, and deemed us worthy of his love and his life. Failure provides a platform for forgiveness, grace, and growth, and unconditional love. We cheat ourselves out of experiencing redemption when we build a wall around the failings. Achievements and failures don't factor into Jesus' equation, so we can stop doing the math. In him, we are fully known and truly loved. So, Harbor Church, family, friends, I want to leave you with this quote from Timothy Keller. To be known but not loved is comforting but superficial. To be known and not loved is our greatest fear. But to be known and truly loved is, well, a lot like being loved by God. It is what we need more than anything. It liberates us from pretense humbles us out of self-righteousness, and fortifies us for any difficulty life can throw at us. So today, as you sit in your homes, whether you're sitting on the couch in your pajamas with your dog next to you, or, so. or behind a computer, or in front of your phone, I just want to give you an opportunity to be known by God. Maybe you're sitting there listening intently going, I've failed, I have screwed up big time, and you've heard about this Jesus who already fully knows you and truly loves you. And you want to know him too and love him. There is redemption for you, my friend. There is always God's redeeming grace. You will never be out of his reach. God says in his word in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 
So if that's you today and you're feeling your heart beat a little faster or that little tug, I just want to invite you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit to walk in your truth. Empower me to do the things that are acceptable in your sight and let my life be a testimony to others who need to be fully known and truly loved by you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I believe the Lord is speaking to another group, um, another group of people as well, people who have given their life to Christ as I have and have done their best to follow him, but like Peter and I, um, we, we feel like we had failed. And it's time, it's time, the Harbor Church, it's time, friends and family, to redefine that failure and to step into a fresh calling that God has for you, just as he did for Peter. So let's spend some time in prayer. Would you join me? Heavenly Father, I just pray for an outpouring, a fresh new wave of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to cover us to cover us with a purpose, with a new calling, a new wave that will excite us. We will be so encouraged to do the work, even in times that don't seem like there might even be a tomorrow, Lord. Even in lives where we feel we've done so much wrong that we've failed so miserably that there can't possibly be hope. Lord, may we find hope in you today. May we find restoration in you today. Lord, I pray that we would redefine our failures in you today, the author and perfecter of our faith. So I thank you for this time, Lord. And I pray just a special blessing on our friends who are listening with us today. And I just pray your anointing on the ears and these words as they've gone out and been received. And I thank you for all you're going to do in and through the amazing works that you have planned for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. So thank you guys for joining us today. If you have prayed either of those prayers with us today, if you have um, something has resonated in your heart that you need to redefine your failure and you just want somebody to pray with you or talk to you, Lord, we just um, want to connect with you. So you can do that one of two ways. So reach out with us um, on Facebook. You can just direct message us right there and uh, one of our staff will get the message and we'll get in contact with you. Or you can simply go to our website at www.theharbormn.com and um, go to contact us and just send us a message and we'd love to reach out to you. Well, folks, thank you for joining us today. And I just want to remind you that we also have Connect Groups meeting during the week. They're via Zoom. And we would love for you to plug in and, and just to be encouraged throughout the week um, through one of those outlets. So know that we are praying for you and have a blessed week. Have a blessed week, guys. <laughs>